Dear fellows, welcome back. I am Hiba Hussein, and on behalf of Communication Skills Module, would like to thank you for your participation and contribution during the past three weeks. The aim of this presentation today is to wrap up all the information that had been introduced to you during the past three weeks. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to talk about the objectives of our presentation today. We're going to have a brief definition of communication and identification of the different co components of the communication process. At the same time, we're going to identify the different communication uh, styles in the workplace and how to interact properly with each communication style and how to evaluate different communication styles in workplaces and finally how to build ways to improve your communication skills at different working places. So let's start. First of all, we need to make sure that communication is a form of core human relationship. The way we communicate to people in our family, workplace and society. Um, communication determines how people perceive us and in turn, how they relate with us. Each one of us needs to make an effort to master the art of conversation or the art of communication. So, first of all, as we explained before, the word communication is descended from a Latin word called communicatio. Communicatio means to share or to make common. Communication is the process where we share and exchange our thoughts, ideas, feelings, and information in a verbal and non-verbal style to achieve a particular goal or, or purpose. Communication skills, unfortunately, are often misunderstood with linguistics, which is the command over a language. Communication is not bound to how good a person is with the spoken or written language. It's more about interaction in different forms. So what is the communication process? Communication process, it, it involves a number of components. First of all, as we discussed before, the first important part, the first important component of this process is the sender who encodes a message and sends it via a channel to the receiver who in turn decode the message and then encode another me message to resend it and give his feedback to the sender to make sure that the message was appropriately delivered and appropriately was if, uh, appropriately understood by the receiver. So the communication process by the end of the day should we should make sure that uh, um, the sender should be able to put forth the thoughts and make others understand his point of view. And at the same time, he should express his message clearly and, he, uh, uh, and effectively. And he should master the effective communication skills tool that we previously discussed, including his tone of voice, his body language, and even the way he styles his outfit. It's very important and critical in different workplaces. Then let's talk about different communication styles. We can communicate either directly or indirectly. As we all know, direct communication, it's like face-to-face -face communication, face-to-face -face conversations. On the other hand, indirect conversation or indirect way of communication, it's like uh, sending message or texting uh, 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 or sending an email. So how can we use different approaches to express our thoughts and feelings and opinions? This is how we say how to master communication styles and how to master communication skills. Every person has a unique communication style a way in which they interact and exchange information with others. There are four communication styles, either passive, passive aggressive, aggressive, and assertive. It's important to understand each communication style and why individuals use them. When we break down these four styles, we'll better understand the characteristic of each style, standard phrases, and what makes them unique.
So let's begin with the first type of communication style, which is the passive communication. So individuals who use the passive communication styles, uh, unfortunately, sometimes they act indifferently. Passive communicators usually fail to express uh, their feelings or their needs, which make it uh, quite uh, difficult to understand uh, their situation. At the same time, these communicators can be safer to speak with, with when a conflict arises because they most likely avoid confrontation or uh, like uh, facing other people with their different um, um, ideas or they, if they have positive, opposite ideas, they don't actually like to face them. So passive communicators often display a lack of eye-to-eye -eye contact, poor body posture, and inability to say no. Uh, passive communicators also act in a way that states people never consider my feelings. They think that people around them, uh, they don't consider their feelings, but unfortunately, people around them, they can't understand them because they don't express themselves uh, quite uh, often or quite in a, um, effectively. So people around them, they lack understanding them, not they don't consider their feelings. The second type in the communication style is the aggressive communication style. And it's often apparent when someone communicates in an aggressive ma manner. You will hear it, you will see it, and you will even feel it sometimes. The aggressive communication style is emphasized by speaking in a loud and demanding voice, maintaining intense eye-to-eye -eye contact, and dominating or controlling others, either by blaming, intimidating, criticizing, threatening, or attacking them. If you are an aggressive communicator, I advise you to reduce stress in your life and to engage in a sport you love. Meditation will help you wipe up some of your aggressiveness. The third type is the passive aggressive communication. These passive aggressive communicators appear passive on the surface, but within he may feel powerless or stuck, building up a resentment that leads to uh, acting out uh, either by indirect or secret way. Most passive aggressive communicators will mutter to themselves rather than confront a person or issue. They are they have difficulty acknowledging their anger. They use facial expressions that do not correlate with how they feel, and even deny that there is a problem. Passive aggressive communicators are most likely communicate with body language or a lack of open communication to another person, such as giving someone the silent treatment, spreading rumors behind people's back. Uh, at the same time, they may appear cooperative, but uh, may silently be doing the opposite. The fourth type of communication is the assertive communication style. It's, it's thought to be the most effective form of communication. The assertive communication styles features are open communication links while not being overbearing. Assertive communicators can express their own needs, desires, ideas, and thoughts easily considering the needs of others. At the same time, they aim for both sides to win in a situation. They always aim for a win-win situation, balancing one's rights with the rights of others. And what that, this is what really makes them unique and makes it one of the most uh, uh, easy kind of communica communication style communicators to be deal with. And finally, comes how to evaluate the communication skills. First, so one, let's talk about the behaviors affecting communication. Behaviors affecting communication are classified into nonverbal and verbal behaviors. The nonverbal behaviors include the environment. The environment should be 
be comfortable to make it uh, uh, an add-on for the receiver and the sender to understand and comprehend the message. If the environment uh, is not comfortable or there is a physical barrier, then this will act as an inhibitor for delivering the message appropriately, as well as listening. We, as we previously discussed, the act of listening is one of the most important behaviors in the effective communication styles. Don't be easily distracted because distraction will unfortunately uh, uh, inhibit the communication between the sender and the receiver. And the receiver. Also, the eye-to-eye -eye contact. It's better to be frequent and not constant all the time. So maybe the receiver feel insecure or maybe he feels stressed if you have a sharp eye-to-eye -eye contact with him all the time. And let's start with the verbal communication. First of all, voice. That's a tone. It's much, much more better than the harsh tone. It really differs. For me, I am a person who can't, who lose uh, a lot of my uh, focus when I am hearing a lecture if uh, the tutor or the instructor is talking in a very loud tone. It makes me distracted. I feel like I'm, a, I'm not okay. I'm, I'm, this is not the tone of voice that makes me feel uh, comfortable. I feel stressed. Uh, as well as the facial expressions. The facial expression, expressions is very important in the communication and effective communication. And as we said during the, 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 the last uh, PowerPoint presentation that a gentle tone and simple smile can take you a long way with your audience. And finally, your body posture. Uh, you should show relaxation and open. Unfortunately, some people, they talk while they are doing their arms, putting their arms on their chest like this, and this makes a barrier. This makes me feel when I see a person doing this, that he's not relaxed, that he's tense, okay, as if he's trying to hide something. So uh, this makes um, a barrier or an inhibitor during communication. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, how we can uh, perform the verbal communication in a good way. First of all, question form. It's very important where you can ask an open end question to generate hypothesis or close end question to test hypothesis. Uh, don't try to be rigid and don't try to ask questions uh, as if they are leading questions. At the same time, the interview styles never be judgmental. Communication uh, needs kind of empathy. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we should uh, follow the lead of others prior to making our comments. Um, it's really important uh, being judgmental all the time during talking to a person. Uh, it makes him stressed and he makes them uh, block the way and block the pathway of the communication process. So it doesn't go effectively anymore. More about the verbal behavior that should be uh, that we should uh, adopt during our communication is recommendations. Recommendations. Uh, it's very important in a feedback. Uh, it makes it easy to directly state um, the feedback or directly make his feedback. When I do have a recommendation for a person, so uh, I'm waiting for his back feedback, and this makes it more comfortable. This makes this communication uh, more effective. Uh, so uh, another way of verbal behavior that we should adopt is to ask and to provide information. And this depends upon each situation. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes when you make too much information available, too much details, this makes uh, an inhibition for the person who is receiving all this uh, information. Uh, kind of a sense of humor. Uh, this really makes easy makes it easy for people to get along with each others 
we don't have to be rigid and very serious all the time. Uh, so I guess sense of humor and little sense of humor will make it easily, but for sure we should avoid the inappropriate way of humor. As we have previously or soon we have seen this uh, Oscar event and how the presenter make fun of uh, Will Smith's wife and how it was, um, he, this was a kind of an inappropriate uh, uh, humor style. Um, and it was not appropriate for such an event. And even if it's not um, in the same event, it's not appropriate in general. So finally, how to improve your communication skills? This is very important. First of all, be enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is very important in communication styles. And be the masterful listener. Full ears. Listen with your full ears. Finally, focus on your audience. Make more practice to make sure that audience uh, uh, really understood your message, your conveyed message. And this needs a lot, a lot, a lot of feedback. You should practice more and get a lot of feedback to make sure that you are really uh, delivering your message in an appropriate way. Finally, telling stories. Uh, who hates stories and storytelling? Telling story makes audience more engaged into uh, your message. Finally, uh, I do love this quote. Take advantage of every opportunity to practice your communication skills so that when important occasion arise, you will have the gift, the style, the shapeness, the clarity, and the emotions to affect other people. So thank you so much dear fellows and on behalf of all our team and uh, on head of him uh, and uh, on head of us dr uh, elham yusri uh, we'd like to thank you for your contribution and our team leader dr salwa abu khair she made a lot of effort we'd like to thank you uh, dr nancy zaghloul thank you so much dr amani ouda dr imi bushra uh, dr mohi mahmoud and me, Hiba Hussein, we really thank you so much for your valuable contributions and your valuable uh, uh, assignments that you submitted during the past three weeks. It really enriched us and it was a real pleasure having you during the, pa the past three weeks. Our journey, unfortunately, uh, get to an end, but we are sure that we're going to meet soon inshallah face to face and we're gonna uh, see you all fellows uh, and we hope you um, uh, all to be in a good health and uh, state so thank you so much one more time and have a good day